Yo, 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 what's up? It's your boy Mario. And right now, you tapped into acting entertainment. Y'all keep it locked right here for the hottest interviews, man. Y'all know what we're doing. We out. Um, uh, I wouldn't say crazy. I would say that it's a blessing, you know, um, just to have fans that are still just an, as enthusiastic about coming out to a show and buying a ticket or buying a meet and greet as they were 20 years ago. That's the, that's the thing that I'm like, wow, because people have to still make their own decision on coming and supporting, you know, regardless of the times that we're in, regardless of the fact that you've shifted and you know you kind of have your own journey through music um as you're making music fans still riding with you you know like and coming to the shows and just supporting yeah i think it's just again it's the testament of like talent right and just like having raw talent. When I came in the game, it was just like, I came in as as me. Like, you know, I try to put as much as of my life into the music as possible. Talking about things that I was um, experiencing, you know, even with records like Braid My Hair and Just a Friend, it was still like youthful and so forth at the same time, but timeless. I think it all boils down to timeless music at the end of the day. It's why I can still come and play arenas and, you know, tour and, get great bookings and things of that nature. Timing and, and, and good energy, you know, and really just like protecting my, my energy, you know what I'm saying, and just staying focused. Thank you. Yeah. Now it's amazing to have records that people like really connect to and have grown to over the years and still to this day, have a connection to it you know what i'm saying and it's something that it makes them feel something different than just a record that might be just a hit like i feel like the lyrics and and the feeling and the frequency that i put in it with my vocals just makes it hit a certain way that people just love you know honestly i didn't i didn't even go back and look at that that's crazy 600 million views is crazy, man. Thank you. Thank you. Sheesh. Like, you know, doing it again, you know, and it's not, it doesn't haunt me because I also feel like we're in a different time, you know what I'm saying, where music is just so fast now. People are moving on faster. People's brains and ears have been trained to hear something and then want something new right away but um i'm happy that i came out in a time and that i did you know what i'm saying and like the information that i gained from working with greats like harold lily and um warren campbell who produced that record um just a friend and then scott storch neo who i'm on tour with right now who did let me love who wrote let me love you like i learned so much about the game and the art of creating music and I still take a lot of those things and study others to make the most simple thing feel bigger than what it is. This is about being present in the moment. Was he upset? Yeah, that's what me upset. <laughs> um. I think Jay-Z is a businessman, you know, and a creative. And I feel like he probably was like, damn, you know, if we would have had this record, we could have did these plays. You know, I think Jay-Z thinks on a whole another level, you know what I'm saying, in terms of the whole 360 of an artist. So I get it, you know what I'm saying? I wish I wrote Let Me Love You. Neo wish he had it, you know? So it's like, you gotta win somewhere, you gonna lose somewhere. <laughs> but he did write another song called Let Me Love You. Yeah. yeah. Really 
Yeah. What made you want to touch on real life things that are so consistent in your life, especially when you know many of your kids are that open to you? Um, I think that I came from a really, I wouldn't say humble beginnings. I don't even know what humble beginnings mean in terms of like the word humble, but like I came from rough beginnings. You know what I'm saying? I watched a lot of people suffer in my life when I was younger. My family, you know, growing up in Baltimore, a lot of, it's a lot of, and a lot of, just a lot of poverty, you know? And so I didn't, I never got a chance to process it as a kid. I started when I was 14 professionally. I never got a chance to process that life. So when I came into the industry, it was like a whole other world where it was just like, nothing was real. It was like imagination and, you know, you don't know who really love you. You don't know who really, I just knew I had a talent. And so I just focused on that. But as I got older, I started realizing that life was really a journey, a true journey of like getting back like understanding who you are as a person and understanding God through your journey. And so when I became a mystic, I started really studying energy and how energy works. And I started to study these things. I wanted to understand, you know, why my mom decided to be a fanatic, why she couldn't get off, why she spent so many, so much time in her life, you know, with this disease and why she couldn't get away from it. And so I just started studying the mindset and like chemical imbalances and just like how everything works and how everything is connected. And I speak on it because it's such a big part of my life that saved me in this industry. My awareness of what's going on around me, my awareness of other people, my awareness of how energy works saved me a lot of energy. It saved me a lot of, um, you know, mental breakdowns. It saved me a lot. And so I speak on it because there's people out there that I feel like are now tapping into their spirituality in a different way because of the times we're in, because of the shift that's happening in the world and in the universe. And it's time, you know, it's time for people to understand their true powers. Um, I think when people look at artists, they look at artists, they like put you on this pedestal, right? And of course, what you're really seeing is a person that's deciding to take a risk and deciding to believe in themselves. But we have moments of doubt, we have insecurities, we have, we're, we're human too, but we just, we're like, you gotta jump off the, off the cliff. You know what I'm saying? With no parachute sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta jump, like we, we've chosen to take that, the, the road less traveled. So the mistakes we make is in the open. The success we have is in the open. The failures we have is in the open. So we're, we're more like sac sacrificial lambs when it comes to like how to do life, how to win, how to stand up even when you've fallen. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, I think that that's why like, I, I'm, I'm honest about it because I want my fans and people who connected to my journey. If you were 15 when I came out, you know, now you're in your 30s, right? Life get it real, real for you. You know what I'm saying? I'm blessed to be able to travel and have these experiences, but a lot of people, they go through moments, they don't have an outlet. I have a creative outlet, and that to me is like the secret of imagination, right? A lot of people's imagination get destroyed with day-to-day -day life. And the imagination is the most important one of the most important um, spaces and creative outlets that we have that is the closest to God. And so that's why I speak on it. Cause people, if you have that, then you, you will never die. You'll never feel like you're stuck because everything starts with the mind. Um, it's definitely, the reason why I be becoming a mystic is like during that time I created the awareness and the awareness is what helped me to continue to grow and to be able to understand my shadows and the things I need to understand so I can balance myself out and move through this journey in a more intentional way. So intention is like, that's like one of the things you wanna focus on a lot too, your awareness, your intentions, because that's that's the conversation you have with Source, you know? And um, so yeah, I would say during that time, it definitely helped me to create more awareness before I started like getting back into music and stuff again. Um, 
Have I ever wanted to leave the music industry knowing how dark it is? I mean, I never wanted to leave it. I think that I just wanted to have a rebirth for myself personally and walk back in it with a more assured intention behind why I'm doing it versus just hustling and busting, making this movie, just doing what people were saying, like, yo, you should do this, you should do It's like, why am I doing what I'm doing? You know what I'm saying? Just adding more intention and um, potency behind my actions so that I can be proud of what I'm doing and it can be meaningful, more meaningful. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like a dream, bro. I swear, it's just like a... I wake up every day, I'm like, man, damn, what am I going to manifest today? How am I going to play with the energy today? Like, you know, it's magical. I think some people try, you know, I'm in their way, you know what I'm saying? I think CB definitely talks about certain things in his music. You know, his new album, especially 1111, like me and him have had a lot of deep spiritual conversations, you know. So I think it's a few people, but it's like everybody speaks in their own language. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's my brother. I think that you can't stop a God from shining, man. No matter what happens, you know what I'm saying? It only make you stronger. And so, like, he, he's great. He's one of the greatest that in our generation, he is probably the greatest, bro. As In terms of, like, overall, he's the greatest. CB the greatest. You can't, you can't even hate on that, and everybody know that, whether they like you or not. But he got a lot of love out here. Ain't nothing but love for him. So as long as he keep doing what he doing, he going to keep getting supported. Yeah. 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 No, I didn't have to. I just wanted to shoot a video for it. I wanted to really enjoy my brother too, man. You know what I'm saying? But like, I just wanted to like fully explore that record because I love the record. And um, originally, the record was just me and Tiger record. Me and Tiger did that in the studio together. And then Tiger was focused on another project at the time. Like, yo, I want to put this record out. And then I put Tori on it. And then, you know, things happen and then we had to switch it up. But he gonna when he come back out, he gonna probably put another he gonna go crazy when he come out. I already know. He gonna you know how Tori is. He gonna go crazy with the music. You know what I'm saying? It's fire. He's one of the greatest like writers of our generation, like like as far as like urban music and just like being a great writer, like he's he's a great storyteller. Tori's incredible. It's fire. Yeah, we spoke a few months ago. Yeah, he good. Yeah, yeah, man, he good. So, you know, like, speaking on Mayhem, what's the power right now, the fight of Wayne's in it. He said the Wayne sent you back to London for the five days, right? Yeah, Wayne, Wayne turned that around quick. Like, Wayne's an alien, man. <laughs> Wayne, he lives music, bro. You know what I'm saying? That boy said, uh, he looking like a fist that look like he like to fight. Like he he went so crazy on on main one. He one of my favorite rappers for sure, man. Top five for sure, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> the longest I ever waited to get back a feature. I'm still waiting for features. Yeah, man, I'm still, nah, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm definitely still waiting for hitbacks. You know, I, I hit a lot of people. I'm not going to put no names out there, but like, you know, there's a lot of people I want to work with, and I think it's just about the timing. You know, after I put my next album out and people like see the wave I'm on musically with this new project, I think it'll be a full circle moment. Um, but the longest I ever waited for a feature, I don't know, everybody pretty much turned the features around pretty quick. Like, if they like the record, they be turning it around. So, yeah, it won't be taking long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, versus was a moment. Yeah, Killed that. Yeah, man. You know, you, so you opened up the best in this child in the world, 
Yeah. Destiny. What was that? That was crazy. It was my first time like touring around the whole world. I was like 19 years old. You know what I'm saying? So just imagine a 19 year old kid out here just slaying and going crazy. You know what I'm saying? Singing every night. Like, I don't think like of my generation, like I was one of the first in my age group to like do a big tour like that on some R&B like crossover R&B records. You feel me? Like it wasn't pop, like crossover R&B was popping, but it wasn't like as crazy as it got after that. So it was just like a new age, a new a new wave of putting R&B on a map on an international level. And the tour was crazy, watching Beyonce and Destiny's Child like perform every night. And like just, I learned a lot from just the touring life. Like there's certain levels to it, you know what I'm saying? And the, the commitment that it takes to do it right and get it right every night, the whole team from lighting to production to, you know, the backstage, stage and everything, you know, it was, it was, it really taught me a whole other level of the dimensions of touring. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, it's, it's real. And that's why she's still doing what she do to this day. Yeah. Yeah, it was always love, respect, you know, and appreciation for talent. Always. Every time I see her, it's always love. And she and she a Virgo too, so you know, it's it's lit. Yeah. Yeah, it's a song I got called Like Her too. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Sabrina Claudio, she fired. Yeah. Nah, it was a fake video. It was a fake video. <laughs> but I put it, to, like like somebody on my team put it together, like, yo, we was just, you know, not trolling, but just having fun with it. And I'm a big fan of B, so it was like, she know that. It's all love. Yeah. I wanted her on a remix. Listen, if me and Beyonce ever work, it'll be like, People would be surprised at the magnitude of greatness coming through the speakers. Some people, but it's just like, you know how it is. You know how the game goes, it's gotta make sense. But if there was no rules and me and B got on a record together, it would be nasty. Not like nasty in like a, you know, like it would be a fire song. You feel me? Like, it would be a problem. Yes, two Virgos on one record. Too crazy. Um, Too crazy. So, usually, you, you step away from being managed by a so, uh, you know, you mentioned, like, you know, Um, I mean, it was just the timing of it, you know. It was, it was a timing thing. Matthew's an amazing uh, person, you know. He's done some incredible things in the, in the game, you know. Um, but, yeah, it was just a timing thing, really. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. And I appreciate you. So, you know, Monique has a hand of form of great. Yeah. What do you think about the obstacles? Well, I think she's amazing, and her journey is um, one that everybody can learn from. You know, I think she's very talented and a sweet, genuine person, from what I know, from what I experienced. You know, so um, I think that everybody's journey is 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 unique, and I feel like she's being honest and raw about how she's experienced the industry, you know? And I think everybody may not speak on their part of it. I'm a very private person. There's things that I've experienced that I would probably never speak about. But I, I'm the type of person, I just like to focus on, you know, what I'm what I'm doing moving forward. But I'm happy that she's getting and feeling and opening up and, and releasing things that maybe she had been holding on to, you know? And God is gonna always take care of her. He can take care of you when you're true and you got real talent, you're gonna be straight. You know, so it's nothing but great things I see for her in the future. 
for sure. That's funny. Yeah, she's talented. Um, I do. I definitely could do more, but I, I feel like I just focus on like definitely not like doing things that's going to um, disrupt the growth of my vocal potential or, you know, as you get older, your voice changes, the texture changes, and I find new ways all the time to use it, but, you know, I'm still, you know, singing live on my shows, singing the same songs like I was 15 again, you know what I'm saying, so... It's a blessing to really like love it. You know, I think a lot of it comes from just really loving it, bro. Like I really love what I do. So the passion will always outweigh anything else that could be a vice of mine. Like I don't really have any vices, to be honest. Anything I've ever tried, I never got addicted to anything. You feel me? I just, I'm already high like when I come out the crib, you feel me? But nothing that is going to hurt my voice for sure. Man, thank you, thank you. Shout out to my mom. She had me in a, you know, in a, in a boot in a uh, boot camp when I was young and just like singing all the time, always singing around the house, always singing for people, like everywhere we go, barbershop, corner store, her friends' birthdays. Sing something for the people. You gotta sing something. Why? My son, he sing, and she would make me sing. I'd be scared. She'd take me in the bathroom like, you gonna get out here? You gonna sing? And it worked. So my stage fright. I was over that by the time I was 13 years old. She made me sing everywhere. Oh God, oh God, she wasn't playing. Yeah. Oh God, oh God. Yeah, man, every day, bro. Shout out to Bow Wow, bro. You know, we grew up in together, but it's like, you got to just, man, to me, giving yourself flowers is not always a literal thing. Giving yourself flowers is taking care of your mind, taking care of your heart. You know what I'm saying? Positive self-talk. Um, not surrounding yourself with people that don't treat you like who you are. You know what I'm saying? Um, working out, staying in shape, being healthy. You know, when you need to take time away from because you've been going too hard, take time away. When you need to detox some things, detox some things, you know. Giving myself flowers is really just taking care of myself because I still got a long way to go. Because if you believe what other people believe, there have been a lot of people that didn't believe in me. They're like, oh, he talented, but da 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 It's like, I always knew in my mind that I was never going to stop and I was going to continue to evolve, right? But that's just the name of the game. That's, the, that's life. You got to keep showing up for yourself every day. Day. You can't do something for two days and be like, all right, that's nah. You got to do it and then get better at doing it every day till it becomes a part of you if you want to be great at whatever it is, right? And we all are work in progress. So don't be so hard on yourself and, and, and just be great. You know what I'm saying? Whatever God gave you, be great at that. Whatever you're weak at, work on it. You feel me? Yeah. We need everybody to be great to be honest, so the world can be a better place. If you're great at something, be great at it. Like, don't even doubt it, you know what I mean? And if you do have doubts, push through it. Because whether you doubt it today and love it tomorrow, you still gotta push through it. Don't matter, push through it in your doubt. If you're scared of it, do it while you're scared. You know what I'm saying? Um, Man, Dave's is, Dave is like, everybody's big brother you know what i'm saying if you know dave is like it's like having a funny big brother who's real and raw and don't hold his tongue and just you know cool every time i go to one of his shows it's, it goes from comedy to like a, a concert you know what i'm saying we just have fun um i love dave he's 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 like he's honestly one of the greatest to me comedians who's ever done it i mean i think comedy comedy can be something that brings people together. It could be something where a lot of truths are told, but in a way that could be uncomfortable, but it's real and it's funny. Like, I think he just does it well. You know, he's great from having his own show to now doing all his stand-ups and he's timeless to me. He's timeless. Absolutely. Um, you know, you, like, you have any projects on the way, man? 
Yes, sir. The current status of the new energy is that it's being cultivated right now with some of the greatest. And I'm really excited about the process. It's been fun, you know, going in and out of the studio, but now I'm about to lock in and finally finish the whole thing up. And I appreciate my fans for like being patient for an album. I've been dropping singles, but like now I'm in a different degree when it comes to the temperature and the passion of the creative process. So this is like a special moment. Yeah. Super important. I feel like everything that I'm, I've been doing the past couple of years have been building up momentum. You know what I'm saying? Because I think people will see the very clear shift of like when it's like Mario season. In terms of how I am with my fans, in terms of the output and, and like what I'm giving. So y'all stay tuned, man. It's, it's going to be special. I'm excited about it. Everything about it I'm excited about. The concepts, the names, the people I'm working with, the tour. I'm going to do my own tour. Like, yeah, everything. The whole experience. A joint album? Yeah. Me and Chris Brown. No no question. No question. That's on the male side. On the female side, mm, it would, it's, it's, going, I, it's Beyonce, bro. It's always B for me. It's Beyonce. But I do like Coco Jones. And I do like... Um, I like, I got a song for Snow Allegra right now that would be fire. I love Snow Allegra too. Victoria Monet, that's my sis. We've been knowing each other for years. It's it's so much talent out there with the female artists, but like, yeah, I would say B and CB. Those are my top two. Like, no doesn't always mean, it isn't always final. It's like, no is just like, okay. Maybe this path doesn't work, but I'll take another path. Maybe that door won't open, but I'll take another door. Or I'll just, I'll, I'll, or I'll create the key that opens this door. You feel me? So that's what I mean by that. Cause, and sometimes no is God like telling you I got something better for you. You feel me? Like there's so many ways to look at it, but ultimately you just gotta know that whatever vision you have, it, it can come to life as long as you're putting the work in. But the path to getting there might not be perfect and exactly what you think because you gotta understand that the universe is, is bending to your desires at all times, but it's also about you gotta trust the process. And that's the hardest thing about it, but trusting the process is fun. You know, I've, I've come to like, like the difficult parts of the process. It just make me stronger and make me more mentally, um, sh it makes me sharper mentally, you know, and how I, you know, go around obstacles and things of that nature. It's a part of the process. You gotta love it all. And, and, and when you're working on something or doing something great that the world is about to experience or you're working in an environment where you have multiple things going on at one time to make this one big thing happen, you gotta understand that control chaos is the key. And how good you can control the chaos is how potent and how direct and how precise someone will in, 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 will uh, experience the effect of whatever you're projecting. Oh man, I mean listen, it's so you lose it so quick. The process of losing something is happens so much faster than buying it and choosing what you want to buy. And it was just a lesson. I was young. I didn't have no insurance on it. I lost this fire-ass Cartier watch. And yeah, man, I don't think I'll ever see it again. And it was a great experience. It was a great lesson, for sure. You know what I'm saying? It was a great lesson. You win some, you lose some. Somebody walking around with a steal. Well, maybe they sold it. I don't know. Maybe they sold it and cashed out on it. I'm sure they sold it and cashed out on it by now. We ain't pandemic didn't happen there's a lot if they had it in the vault somewhere by now it's definitely cashed out for sure what is the craziest dm thing you ever seen? i can't say i can't say that on the air i wouldn't say that on the air i got some crazy isn't that crazy yeah for sure the craziest but all type of shit, bro 
But I don't really be open them no more, to be honest with you. I be missing a lot of good ones. But yeah, my focus right now is just staying out the way, staying out the DMs. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Nah, I mean, wild tour stories, listen, the wildest tour stories I'll always have is like, you know, girls breaking the hotel room and staying in your room, like, hot in the closet, like, that happened a lot to me, like, two times, one in London, one in Detroit, yeah, this was like, years ago, bro, this was like, 2011, 12, something like that, yeah, it's a while ago, I tightened up my security since then, you feel me, but... Yeah, that happened. And then other tour stories, like in my younger days, just like when I was wild and young, just like, you know what I mean, hanging out with girls and having parties, waking up, forgetting what the night was. Like, damn, where all y'all come from? Like, <laughs> y'all gotta go. It's hard to kick girls out in the morning, bro. They be acting like they wanna get breakfast and everything. You like, like you gotta go. I got a flight to catch. You gotta go. You gotta go now. It's crazy. If I could change one thing, streaming, uh, how much we get paid? Of course. How much we get paid for streams, you know? And artist development being mandatory. Artists learning the business being like managed. Like you have to mandatory take like some type of business class. Like even if it's just meeting with somebody, like mandatory things. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah. The one thing I would change is obviously how much we get paid because that affects everybody. Yeah, for sure. Oh, God. He was right. Shout out to Friday. My, my, my Philly brother. The hardest decision that I had to make so far... Um, I think just choosing not to like rush the album process because I got a lot of music I got a lot a ton of music I can put out but I feel like the responsibility I have as a as a talent, as an artist that is like really respected as far as a vocalist and R&B and all that, is that I don't wanna rush put out something that I'm not gonna be proud of in 10 years. And that's a hard decision when you got the music, when everybody's like, oh, this is fire, you should put this out, you should put this out, you should, it's just like, nah, like I gotta wait for the stars to align properly, to put it out properly. And I'm proud and happy that I did, so. Look out for the new project coming out soon. Y'all stay tapped in with me. Mario Worldwide on a gram. And I'll tap in with y'all soon. One word. Authenticity. Authenticity because it resonates in every space of your life. Personal, business, you know, your brand. Um, how you feel about everything in your life. Authenticity is everything. Like, even down to you saying, I don't want to... The furniture you pick for your house. Like, everything. You know what I mean? What's going to make you feel like when you look around, you're seeing reflections of you and it's what you feel. You know what I'm saying? So, authenticity, for sure.